Welcome to SBCA's Lumber Connection Podcast, where we discuss today's market and explore tomorrow's trends. Here's our host, Molly Butts. Hello and welcome to Lumber Connection. It's the week of November 11th, 2024, and I'm back in the studio with my regular experts, Justin Binning and Ken Timmons. Justin and Ken are from American International Forest Products, or AIFP. Welcome to the podcast, gentlemen. Hey there, Molly. Thanks, Molly. How's it going? Great. Yeah. Well, this week is a big wholesale lumber event, NALA, North yeah. American Wholesale That's right. Association. Yeah. Big event in Phoenix, Arizona, one of the most beautiful cities in the country. So Justin and I will be recording this podcast from Portland, Oregon, where it is pouring rain for the next, I don't know, six months. I was going to say, you, know, you seem to be in your usual spot, so that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, we're in the bomb shelter under the trading floor. <laughs> we're going to record the podcast because the Wi-Fi is stronger down here for whatever reason. <laughs> that's what makes a good podcast. It makes, it makes total sense. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, our viewers can't see you, but I feel like we're having a serious No Shave November event going on the podcast today. So we're going to see what happens in a couple of weeks when you all show back up. And we can alert the listeners then. <laughs> Until then, let's get into the meat and potatoes of what's been happening in the lumber market for the last couple of weeks. Well, I think the meat and potatoes of it, just like the No Shave November contest, like a good baseball playoff rally beard, the market has been reacting energetically to last week's election news. Coast to coast, like uh, some spots are hotter than others, but trade volume and what I'm doing it for is definitely up. It's almost deceiving. If you were on the trading floor with the traders working, you wouldn't necessarily hear it in the tone of the conversations or the number of conversations. But at the end of the trading day, when we look at the volume and the number of transactions, definitely elevated. Prices are up in all fur products. Doesn't matter what it is. If it's a fur species, the price is up. Some of it very emotionally. The most emotional of the products were Doug for studs, which for many years in this podcast, I've said, lead the market up, lead the market down. You could make the same claim for Southern Yellow Pine leading the market up, leading the market down. Right now, they're doing opposite things. Pine's coming off. First studs are exploding upward. So that's interesting. You can pick which bellwether you think's right. Personally, for products, it's all supply side driven. Very little supply out there, especially as we go into holiday weeks, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Really poor for production. That being said, the counterpart to the argument of where could that lead the market to go is winter weather on consumption. Really the one and only factor that's creating a argument for prices to level off, take a pause, any of that kind of notion. Let's couple all that with transportation. Trucking prices are going up significantly since the last time we recorded a podcast. Maxis, flatbeds, and vans on the West Coast all going up. Car rates actually are not going up for the first time in quite a while. I'm glad to hear that. Car availability's been fine. I would say one thing that's interesting is not all rail lines are performing the same. Certain rail lines are shipping cars extremely quickly, whereas other lines slower than expected rates. Going from Oregon to Southern California in two and a half, three weeks. A little abnormal. Where, you know, counterpart rail lines, maybe five, six, seven days. I'm not going to label who's doing good, who's doing bad. I'm just saying some are different. Yeah, that's pretty normal too. Yeah, I feel like. Yeah. Well, it just seems like the five, six, seven day transit up and down the West Coast is like particularly quick. Right. You know, eight, nine, 10, 11 days, a little more normal. Probably stuff. seasonal stuff. Probably taking some cars out end of, end of fall out of the rotation, out of the system, I'd imagine. And yeah. Yeah. So. Overall market, very, very strong with fair products. It is very tight. It's easy to say that's not a hot take. Can't replace a lot of products. So there's going to be, you know, ups and downs of digestion through the end of the year. Today is November 13th. Mm-hmm. We've got six weeks until everyone pops champagne on New Year's or whatever you like to do. I think of those six weeks, three of them are going to be real quiet. Three of them are going to be a little more active and we're going to go up and digest and we'll go up and we'll digest at least infer through the end of the year. There's very little argument to be made that it comes off. Okay. JB? Yeah. Well, I mean, Ken started out with obviously, you know, the election being completed. I think we're all thankful for that. No more tax, you know, ads, constant inundation of who to vote for. So that's settled. And I think that just everyone can kind of feel a weight that was lifted there. 
and how it relates to business, I think the overall tone and with that news has been, and I think, you know, and if we're going to talk market and I don't want to get too far down there, but I think it's important and it's, I think it's a good thing for us. And anyways, I won't get into my opinions, but in terms of the overall market, you know, as we touched on last time, a couple of weeks ago, felt like two by four, we're starting to stack up in some spots and we Pricing was felt like it was going to come back to us a bit, and that had and has indeed kind of taken place. Two by six has been pretty darn resilient, um, and I think a lot of that is because of the inability to source other species um, easily, and some significant cost savings that yellow pine presents as well. So, two by six has been hanging in there for the most part, and it does feel like there's some tightening on the upper grades, certainly some of the stress grades both on the narrows and even in the wide. So I think over the, the course of the next four weeks, it's probably the low prices that we're going to see moving into next year, I think are in front of us. We've really only got four weeks left in the year. So you got two holiday weeks there. And I think we're going to see pretty good round of buying get done prior to Christmas would be my guess with people starting to fill in their inventories to a little deeper level in preparation for a solid spring. So great opportunity ahead of us. Also falls in line with really this four to six week trend we've been in yellow pine. You know, if you look at that week prior to Christmas, that kind of, there's your six weeks. So again, that's been the trend. We can't ignore that. Um, But uh, we do something really cool at AI. Every morning we have a, a all Salesforce meeting and we have just under 40 traders of which our president was a trader for a long time. We really get down to brass tacks, meat and potatoes of the trade. And Justin said one of the coolest things I've heard in a long time. It was a very concise way to wrap up the market. He said, I got a lot of guys who are expecting a good year. So we're going to build some inventory and we're going to build it early. I think it was really well said that in December, January could be either the low price for 2025 or one of the half year or quarter year for sure if it's not the low it will be damn near the yeah low. and you may find it again there in the first half of the year at some point but this is one of those times totally right in between the next opportunity which may be a few months out yeah so sneaky strong winter market yep and a good understanding of i think underlying demand and where it is certainly still pent up so super bullish long term right on the on, on the industry and our markets but yeah, it's going to be a good time to buy some wood. Yeah. You know, Ken, you started by talking about supply being sort of low right now, pretty, you know, Absolutely. obviously low right now. And then I read that they're actually, in addition to a fire at a mill in Canada, there have also been some others sort of offline for a week or two for maintenance and some other things. So it seems like, you know, production may be taking a little bit of a little bit of time off. And it was also really interesting to hear you talk about this sort of emotional response to election results and not to take it to the political side of things, but just more so that we've talked about the fact that nothing else has really spurred that emotional response for totally. you know, like months, well, right? So like here we years, are. And I feel like, like years, like post-COVID. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and you're totally right, Molly. And almost in the last six months of lumber trading, there has been a emotional response to not making a decision because of the looming election. Right. And it felt like as soon as we just got the camel through the keyhole there and it was behind us, then like everyone had a sigh of relief with just some certainty in where they think things are going, whether right. people's opinions good or bad, you know, varies across the country. But the, but if half the country is thinking one way, no, no, totally. Right. Like I'm, I'm trying my best not to interject my own opinion here. Obviously totally understand that. Yes. The line. I'm sure. just saying like, the fact that we're past that date, yeah. everybody had a big sigh of relief and like a little bit more confidence of understanding their future. Yeah. And I wouldn't even say the emotional response has been seen in the market. I wouldn't correlate those two per se, okay. like that instant reaction, right? Like sugar, hot water, salt, no, but it's sitting on the bottom and the waters look warm, ready to be stirred, right? So right. that's where it feels like we're at. Do you like that? Kenny? That was one of my... It's a good food reference. I, I dug deep. It's a good that. food reference. It wasn't very colorful fur. and exciting. But. Fur is like blue Kool-Aid right now. <laughs> the 12-year-old threw it in a gallon of tap water and we're drinking it already. It's <laughs> going. But yeah, I like the reference. It's yeah. Good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So we need to kind of look ahead then, right? We're talking about the fact that there are about six weeks of the year left, but really like, you know, between holidays and then more holidays, there's really probably only about four good 
working weeks left. Where are we headed? You know, where is this going? And what can our folks do to be prepared for not just the like we usually say, like, what's the next two weeks look like? But let's look a little further out. You know, let's look at, ahead to the end of the year and then into Q1. Make some purchases. I know a lot of folks would like to see things at the, you know, first half of the or first of the year. Right. We've got some folks out there in many states with inventory taxes, year end stuff. Totally get that. It's like I want to keep it light and lean. And then Jan 1, we're going to start building up. So, again, I think it's right before Christmas. I would expect to see some bigger volumes get done. That's my hunch. And I think we see kind of choppy waters really on everything outside of two by 10 because of the, just the value that it represents in the marketplace and the lack of return that there is for the mill. I don't expect that one to get much better. But, but I think, you know, there's going to be some opportunity over the course of the next few weeks to really, I think, lock in some of your lowest pricing for the first quarter. So that would be my two cents is expect, you know, some deals out there and print to be a little bit negative for a short period of time here and until, you know, we get mid-December. Yeah. Very similar. Fur, fur has been particularly hot in dry fur products as of late. Those might take a little breather here in a week or two while green products pri- primarily used in California perk up and really get cooking middle of December. I'd also like to specify my Kool-Aid reference. I used blue in the example. Red is my favorite Kool-Aid. <laughs> and we digress. All right. Any final thoughts before we wrap up the episode for this week, guys? Bye, Lumber. Yeah. I'd awesome. say call me. Call me if you need a deal. <laughs> that would be my two cents. I think it's a good time to buy some wood. All right. Well, I think with that, that will wrap up our episode for this week. Justin, Ken, thank you for your continued expertise and enthusiasm. As always, I've enjoyed our time together, albeit brief, and I look forward to the next installment of Lumber Connection. Thanks, Molly. Awesome. Thank you, Molly. This has been a Lumber Connection podcast by SBCA. If you have a question you'd like a guest to answer on a future podcast, send it to podcast at sbcacomponents.com.